Hey y'all, I have a Harry Potter theory which is blowing my mind right now. I was rereading the tales of Beetle the Bard, specifically the tale of the three brothers, the tale of the Deathly Hallows, and it got me thinking about the nature of the Resurrection Stone and the Cloak of Invisibility, and specifically why the Cloak of Invisibility is able to help the youngest brother hide from death. And I was thinking about Mrs. Norris, and the cat, and how this cat is able to sense the presence of Harry because, you know, she's a cat, she can smell him probably, and sometimes Harry isn't able uh, to hide his sound, right? If he breathes too loudly, then someone can, can know that someone is nearby. So the cloak does not guard against smell or against sound, and if that's the case, it makes you wonder why death, this powerful being which grants the Deathly Hallows to the Three Brothers. Why death isn't able to just get it like a, a hound dog or, you know, some find some way to, to find this youngest brother? And then I started thinking about the Resurrection Stone and what the Resurrection Stone actually does and the purpose of the Resurrection Stone. And it made me realize what death can do and what death cannot do. And I'm not talking about death in actuality or death as understood by different cultures or beliefs, but the way we kind of maybe think about death in the tale of the three brothers, this grim reapery figure. And, it, it, you know, I thought more about how it looks and how it seems to act in the story, and I realized death in the story isn't concerned with sound or smell. That sounds like a silly thing, but hear me out. When we talk about death, think specifically the second brother, the idea of bringing someone back from the dead. You know, we're not just talking about the idea of, of them being with us again, someone who's gone being with us again, because many of the stories that we listen to or read or watch, uh, you know, in our conversations with people talking about death, we say, you know, they will always be with us. But what do we really mean when we think about the Resurrection Stone? We want to see them again. That's the whole point. We want to see them again. It wasn't enough for the second brother to know that his love was with him. He wanted to see her. And when we're sad, maybe that's the point, is we don't see them, even though maybe we should know that they're with us. But we want to see them. So then thinking about what death cannot do in the story, he cannot bring back the second brother's lost love. He can just show her to him. And then thinking about the third brother, why couldn't death find him? Because that's all death is, it's appearance. It's not about smell or sound or truly being with someone, it's just about appearance. And that's the only power that death has is to take, take away the appearance of someone, to, to take away our ability to, to see them. Now, of course, death is more complex and more con complicated than that. Uh, I don't wanna take that away from anyone. It's, it's true that death is far more complex, but thinking about death in the story, it's really all about appearance, isn't it? And of course, we can make jokes about, you know, the Grim Reaper, figure having a skull and therefore no nose, which then makes me think about Voldemort not having a nose and, you know, the iconography there, but, but really when it comes to the Deathly Hallows, it's all appearance. And maybe if you stretch the metaphor a little bit, you can think of the youngest brother, he's the wisest because he, he wasn't afraid of death, while Voldemort or someone wants to be the master of death, the youngest brother wasn't afraid of death because he knew that even when he eventually takes the cloak off and death finds him and, you know, brings him <laughs> into the afterlife. It's, it's all appearance. He's not really gone. And the people who he's lost, they're not really gone. He just can't see them. But ultimately, they're with him, aren't they? That's my thought.